Good day, Brittle Plant listeners. This is Eric Peterson, quarantining from Salt Lake City. And today I'm honored to be joined by the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Wolf Hoffman. How are you doing? I'm doing fabulous. How are you? I'm good. Where are you quarantining from today, New York? Uh, Florida, actually. <laughs> ah, nice. Good for you. Yeah, so this fake background is supposed to be New York, but, you know, hey, yeah, yeah, you know, we do what works. we can. Yeah. Wow. I was going to say, wow, what a good day to be alive. What did you think about what happened yesterday? I know. How how crazy is that? Just when you thought you'd seen it all? I mean, God, it's crazy, isn't it? I mean, we thought 2020 was crazy, and then the sequel 2021 happens, and like it's like, wow. Not a good start for the year. We thought everything is almost, you know, on the on the – on the better yeah. plane, you know, that, uh, that the new year starts. We forget about the past and we start the new year fresh and everything's going to be fine and peachy. Mm, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, the the last time I saw, I had a chance to see you guys was in uh, 2011. It was on the Blood of Nations tour and you guys had, mm-hmm. you were in town wow. in Salt Lake with Sabaton. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sabaton opening up for us, which yeah. is odd because we, Played with them later in Europe, and they're a big band or huge now in Europe. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. It, but that was that was a fun tour. I mean, but that was the last chance. I think I don't know if you've been to Salt Lake since then, but that was the last chance I had to see it. Uh, yeah, I don't think we've been back. We haven't done much touring in the U.S. in the last few years, just because it's uh, you know we've always been busier overseas, and we play big festival shows and such. We haven't had a chance to do a proper year uh u.s tour yeah in the last few years yeah. hopefully hopefully soon i mean when this whole pandemic stuff is finally over maybe then yeah that would be nice you know that'd be, be wonderful yeah so the uh the new album uh too mean to die is set for yeah. release it just got pushed back to the 29th correct yeah, it has been, and I don't really know, understand all the reasons why. I think it has something to do with COVID shutdowns at the pre- at the manufacturing facilities over the holidays or something. Yeah, but I don't know. What's another two weeks? We just have to wait another two weeks, right? Yeah. So, so digitally, will it be available or not? Totally, just not available till the twenty ninth. I think I want to do it all together, okay. as far as I know. But yeah. that's really not my department. I just make the music, yeah. and then the people in higher places decide on these things, you exactly, know, exactly. I've just been informed yesterday myself. I think it's a bit of a bummer after all this wait, but you know, nothing we can do. We yeah. just have to wait another two weeks. Yeah, exactly. So I'm curious about the recording of this album, how it differed from previous albums, just from a standpoint of when you recorded it in 2020. It really wasn't that much difference. Uh, different from the previous albums. I mean, we started early in the year because we all thought we're going to be on tour for most of the year, and, and including Andy Sneap, who is now the guitar player, and Judas Priest, yeah. as you might know. So we were both thinking, how are we going to make this album this year? And we all said, well, we have to wait and see and squeeze it in the best we can. So why don't we get started with what we have now and record what we can while we can and then worry about the rest later? So that's what we did, and then that was about the early March, and the pandemic started to develop, and it got worse and worse. And then, when it was time to regroup, oh, let, let me put it back up. Uh, so the pandemic happened, and we got seven songs in the can, and all of a sudden, all the touring was canceled, obviously, uh, for the summer, which meant, oh, great, we've got time to work on this album. I mean, not good because yeah. the shows would have been. Yeah good and important but at least we can work on this album but uh that also meant there was no more travel into the united states from the uk for andy so we had no choice but to work alone i mean engineering it ourselves in our studio in nashville and andy was able to be present online oh wow so you yeah i was able to listen in from his studio in in the uk and you know say his words of wisdom and basically produce it from back there while we were, the rest of us was recording in Nashville. So was he with you guys at any part during the recording of it? Yeah, he was. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, the first half, like I said, in March, he was there. We recorded six or seven songs together. 
and then the rest of the stuff he couldn't personally be there you couldn't travel yeah. so yeah so so it pretty much uh, made him to but I mean he kind of knows because he's worked on a lot of your albums what he what you guys kind of want and what the sound is like so it wasn't as hard probably as it sounds like right no it was actually quite I and mean, then I'd say it inconvenience more than anything yeah. it was like you say we know each other so well so you know a few words here and there is all we need and we know what to do and we'll just do a bunch of takes and he he says something and then we'll we'll shoot the files over to him because he mixed it in his studio in england anyhow so you know it was really yeah it's just like and you we were communicating like you and i are communicating yeah. right now and you know, if I was playing a guitar riff right now, you could say, you could hear it, you could say something, and I could play it again. And, you know, so it, it, it's totally doable. Good, good. So it, that's that's good that it didn't really affect things too much. But I, I was going to ask you, did did the pandemic itself affect how the album, the sound of the album at all for you guys, to, or the recording or the writing or anything? Uh, not so much, okay. no. I mean, we didn't want to write any specific Corona songs or yeah. we didn't really want the album to be related or talking about the whole pandemic. I mean, we've already had a song called Pandemic and we've the last album was called The Rise of Chaos. So we basically said everything we can, can say about these crazy times <laughs> yeah. on previous albums. We didn't really want to focus too much on the whole Corona stuff yeah. because, man, we we and everybody else had enough of all this by now, I think. And, and in 20 years, people are going to go, God, I do not want to hear that song again about the Corona. Exactly. And initially we had a working, we wanted to call the album at some point or very early on as a working title. It was called 2020. <laughs> and I'm kind of glad we didn't, yeah. you know, Yeah. because it's got a bad vibe now or bad, you know, exactly. bad taste in your mouth. If, if, the album would have been called 2020 with like, yeah. you know. Yeah, exactly. So on this album, you added a third guitar player. You added Philip to the mix, right? We did. Yes, sir. We <laughs> did. And that only happened by chance or it was one of those things. Why not? You know, we, we met Phil a couple of years ago during an uh, orchestral tour we did in Europe when our original guitar player or our other guitar player, Uwe, wasn't available. Mm -hmm. We had Phil as a sit-in during those uh, months on the road and he turned out to be such a fantastic player and such a nice guy that we didn't want to let him go after this tour and we said well why can't we do can't there be three guitar players on stage true true and I mean, in the studio there's no law there's no metal police that says you can't do that right and and, and kind of why the way you think of it it's very spinal tap i mean you could turn it to 10 with two guitar players but why not turn it to 11 with three right there you go. You know, maybe we're going to have four guitar players next year. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then you also added um, Martin on bass. Um, we did. And we how, did. How and he's, he's, how, a, he's a great guy. German yeah. guy. Lives in Nashville, so he's, he's a rare find. Uh, he lives, you know, so there's, you know, a, another German in Nashville, which is kind of unusual to begin yeah. with. Yeah, yeah. And he turned out to be a great songwriter. He contributed a bunch of stuff to the new album. So it's all good. worked out in our favor. That's good. That's good. So the album itself is uh, it's classic, except which we, which we, is what we expect, you know. But it's got um, some different stuff in it because of the the third guitar player and and obviously the addition of Martin on bass. I think so. One of the songs I really enjoyed was Symphony of Pain. It has some a Beethoven sound to it. Is that right? Ode to Joy. Oh yeah, certainly. It's got some absolutely Ode to Joy. But in this case, we turned it into a different key, and now it's the Ode to Pain. <laughs> ah, okay. You know? Yeah, yeah. How, how was that? Um, what was that song like for writing for you, or for for you guys to record, or for the writing process for it? I guess. Yeah, that song is interesting because it really t t it developed. Uh, it's been I've been kicking around that idea for some time, and mainly I just write like the phrase "Symphony of Pain" because I, didn't, I don't know why, but it really sounded very metal to me. Yeah. It's a symphony of pain, you know. It's like the ultimate pain somehow. And um, I finally had some riffs together that I really liked, and, and and the chorus was coming together quite nicely and then i thought like you know symphony symphony you know if there's ever a good moment to put some more 
classical symphonic stuff into a song, it'd be this one. Yeah. And which uh, symphonies are the best known in the world? It's probably Beethoven's fifth and ninth. Yeah. So I, I managed to smuggle both of those classical elements into the song. And then to, to even take it one step further, we then said, why don't we write the lyrics about Beethoven's struggle with deafness? Because mm -hmm. that was sort of a symphony of pain for the guy. Oh, I'm you sure. Know? I'm sure. Must have, must have been horrible. Can you yeah. imagine? I mean, being a, a composer of that caliber and then you go deaf. Can you? I mean, it must have been. There's a symphony of pain right there. Exactly. So. Exactly. And then the song Sucks to Be You. I was going to ask you, since the, the album is delayed, I was going to ask you if there was a chance um, we could insert three or four people's names I would like to insert instead of you into that title. <laughs> I mean, and then we could, yeah. we could roll them out on limited edition. Sucks to be so-and-so. Sucks to be so-and-so. <laughs> Use your imagination. It's open to interpretation. You can use who or, whose ever name you choose. <laughs> and I'm sure, you know, everybody's going to have their favorite name to insert there. Yeah. And that's the great part about that song is you just listen to it and you go, you know that everybody in the world that listens to this song has a person that they want to associate with that song. Exactly. So it's, it's, it's fun, you know. Yeah, it's good. And then overnight sensation. I mean, that's that's dedicated to the YouTube people who eat live octopuses on camera, and then they attack them, and they get a million likes. And I mean, that's a great song. Exactly. People do that sort of thing. I didn't even know that. Oh yeah. Part, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's nothing they won't do for a little, you know, for a million clicks. I guess. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh yeah. And, and I, I, I'm guessing that for you, you probably see that kind of stuff, and you just you just shake your head and you go, really. I mean, yeah, I mean, the idea is what went through my mind or our mind is like, it's so bizarre nowadays. People get famous for the weirdest reasons and they get famous sometimes overnight. And where we come from and when we got started, if I think back to, you know, the early days when I joined the band and I wanted to play guitar and whatnot, it was understood that you have to practice for years and years and you got to put in the hours 10,000 hours was always the, the, the catchphrase. Yeah. And it, it takes forever to be good enough to be noticed. Uh, you know, so nobody was thinking you could possibly be famous overnight. And, but nowadays the, there's another generation out there that actually thinks completely different. Exactly. You know, but and they, 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 they do the craziest stuff and they manage to be influencers and this and that. And sometimes they're just famous for being famous. You know, so it's a it's a different world nowadays for sure. And the interesting part is, is they as fast as they rise, as they're gone that fast too. That could be. Yeah, I don't even know enough about it, but it, it just is a curious. I mean, it's just an observation that you have. Yeah. You know, to the worlds are changing for sure. So my favorite song in the album is "I Love the Undertaker." That's a great song, and for me, <laughs> lyrically, that song, I just love the lyrics to that song. Yeah, that's an interesting song because the lyrics were written first on that song, oddly enough, which hardly ever happens. But, uh, you know, early on in the songwriting process, I, I always ask everybody, hey, what do you have? And I ask Mark, do you have any song titles? And do you have any, any, any stuff for me, any inspiration, anything I can use? And he said, well, I've got this set of lyrics here. I wrote them as a poem and that could be a song maybe or maybe not. I don't know. So he gave me that. The, the words to the undertaker and it inspired me to write that the music to it nice. in a spooky way. And I was thinking of this creepy undertaker guy, maybe from the Western movies that we all know, the guy dressed in black, you know, yep. the yep. funny hat. And, you know, I don't know. It's just evokes a lot of, it's always good. I think if you read lyrics and you get this sort of movie going off in your head a little bit, and that helps me to write songs and, to get into the mood for something, you yeah. know? Yeah. And the undertaker definitely does that. Cause you have this picture of this kind of creepy guy that nobody likes, but he looks a little creepy, but he's, you know, he's comes out at night, not during the day. And it, it kind of just, yeah, 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 the whole song just flows perfectly. So I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that line. Um, uh, uh, rich or poor, large or small, the undertaker takes them all. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I always like that line. I, Good. Well, I, I, for me, I think back, I mean, I've been an Accept fan for a long, lot of years, and um, 
I think everybody would say that the first song that they really liked was Balls to the Wall. I mean, everybody says, oh, that song, that song. But for me, I mean, one of the first songs I really loved, and it wasn't till after Balls to the Wall, was I love Midnight Highway. That, I mean, I'm, I know I'm dating myself there, but damn, that's a, I love that song. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we ever played that all, very much, that song. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I mean, everybody has their favorite. It's cool. And, and the funny part about it is that album uh, is I, I was, you know, I was the guy, you know, again, I'm dating myself, that, that reads the album notes and the liner notes and the, inside the covers and stuff like that. And, and I realized afterwards that Michael Wagner was the one who engineered <laughs> that, right? He did, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I, I'm a huge Alice Cooper fan too, and he went on to do a lot of Alice Cooper and some Ozzy and some Doc and stuff. What was it like working yeah. with Michael? Michael's a great guy, and he still lives in Tennessee. We're still, we don't have such a close relationship anymore, but we definitely see each other and, and call each other once in a while. And, you know, he moved to Tennessee mm, in part because we lived there uh, and he was tired of LA, long story. So we have a lot of things in common, long, long background. Nice. He had his recording studio on my property for the longest time in Tennessee. Um, so yeah, we have, a, you know, we go way back. Nice. Good guy, really good guy, very knowledgeable. And yeah. Well, if you got, when you guys come back to Salt Lake, if you could just put that on the, on the set list for midnight highway, that'd be great. Not highway, just for you. <laughs> yes, yes. So my my last question for you is, and it's it's kind it's a I, we've got some obvious answers, but I was hoping we might not have some so obvious ones. Is give me a song by accept, by title or by content that best describes the state of the world today. Oh, geez. Um, well, the rise of chaos, yeah, I would say. Yeah, and then pandemic is obvious. It's an obvious one. Obviously, that's the obvious one. But yeah. I say the rise of chaos pretty much sums it all up too. Um, so, and we thought it was chaotic two years ago or three years ago or whenever we wrote that song. But yeah. geez, it's still quite relevant today, isn't it? Yeah, and it's it's almost like a like a ballad now, huh? Compared to what's going on now. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you got to be hopeful and, and stay positive in these crazy times, man. Yeah. It's just, I mean, wow. Yeah, exactly. Well, Wolf, I appreciate your time. And everybody go pick up Too Mean to Die on the 29th now. Um, yes, please. But yeah. you, you can still listen to the singles that you guys have released. And it's, it's a good uh, overall idea of what you're we, what you can expect from the album awesome all right man well i appreciate Please. your time and uh i look forward to seeing you guys live again when we can finally do that yeah, you please stay safe in your canyon, and you know, hopefully, we'll get to make some metal music again soon. Exactly. All right. All right. 